strange, but honestly, like throughout all his champions, his team fighting as support, like pretty on point, honestly, for all of his picks. So I really have nothing bad to say about him for that for that sense. Well, we'll see whether the brand is going to once again be banned away. I have a feeling it probably will be, but the Poppy is <laughs> going to be first up, followed by the Tom Kench. And there is the Nidalee taken away by Albus Knox, of course, on the red side this time around, which could change things up for these guys. Well, at this point, Brand or Bard is getting through here. Uh, definitely one of the two. Oh. Oh? This just in. Could it be a Brand first pick for Mithy? Surely not. Uh, Surely it could. It, it could happen. I've honestly like just playing a solo queue. I've seen like people like Mako. He put like 30 games of brand support in, like through all the games I've seen. So like people <laughs> are playing the unconventional supports because they think they're pretty good. I think. Yeah, I actually remember back to the IWCQ tournament and when all of the teams were screaming against each other. Liquid was just going nuts on Brand, so all of the support players in the tournament were scrimming with Brand to try and work out why it's so good. None of the others played it. <laughs> and, and to be honest, would it really be a first pick Brand? I, I don't think it should be a mm. contested pick. Surely A and X don't know that G2 would play Brand. I, I think if it were to be a Brand first pick or any, or like even G2 playing the Brand at any point, it would give you more of an inclination of, on how G2 are taking the game. I think yeah. more than. Uh, how actual hey. pick and ban should work. There's no, no need to sell it. It could be a no, good I'm strategy. Not. Who knows? I'm not trying to. Mithy has been known <laughs> to play a few different things to support. Um, and European solo queue, there was a lot of the, the brand Annie style. So we certainly oh, have yeah. played the brand before. But uh, when it comes to that support matchup, Mithy, I, I feel he's been tending a lot towards the Brawman. I haven't been the most impressed with Mithy this tournament, considering the, the, the hype that was around Sven and Mithy as a bottom lane pairing. What are your thoughts, perhaps, even on the pairing itself, from what you've seen, Gabe? Uh, yeah, I definitely think G2's Batu is underperforming at this tournament. Uh, we see a first pick, what? Alistair. Yeah, actually. Alistair's going to be locked in first up, so <laughs> taking that one away. But weirdly enough, it's not in Lacrit's playable champion pool, necessarily. <laughs> I, I don't think, yeah, I think Lacrit plays Brand anything. Bard, Tarek, yeah, like anything that's the champions he's going to play one, right now. So. It makes no sense to me, actually, why they would take that. <laughs> Seems like NX is going to just get whatever comfort picks they're going to get on their 1 and 2. It's it's a bit strange as well, because when you look at priority of champions, like, Alistair, I don't think anyone would tell you it was first pickable. Not only, like, in the meta, but yes, it's got a high win rate, but when you look at what it, you've now shown a and given away is you've given away half of your duo matchup. Typically, G2 like to last pick that. You've also shown that you're playing a, a melee support, so there are only a few champions left that, that you compare with it to, to actually have a fairly solid bot lane. So ANX already taking you know a heavy lane-focused AD carry on the other side to try and punish this. I think anything Licker can play now is good into Alistair. <laughs> like yeah. that whole pool is, it's like you're showing your weaknesses, which doesn't make too much sense to me. Uh, which like also makes me think like what actually does look like what is his weakness as a support? I, I, he's overly I, aggressive. Yeah, I he's think, overly aggressive. But like, uh, I also I've seen him not prioritize vision very mm. well. Um, but he just gets a very late side stone as well. Yeah, so just, and just overall, I think as a team, their how they play around vision is a little off for mm. a world's team. Uh, they they 50, 50 every every <laughs> single pair. It, it's really painful to watch actually, but. Uh, as for his champion pool, I wonder if he, he can actually, like, what if he can actually also play the conventional supports like Nami or something like that, like, not super, not super out of the, you know, meta, I, or, or like, yeah, it seems like he's gonna just play Brand. I, I <laughs> think he will. I mean, you heard uh, ANX talking about it, the Nivea open, we, we take it, Brand open, we take it. So, I mean, if that does come about, we'll see how it works into the, the Civ or Alice. Obviously, Civ uh, you know, you can spell shield out the ult if he chooses him as the first target. So there are a couple of interactions that Siva will have as a benefit to this. Yeah. Difficult to get stunned. If you get hit by Pillar and then the Q, or the E and then the Q, you're kind of asking for it at that point <laughs> with uh, Siva. So maybe we'll uh, see a little bit easier of a bot lane compared yeah. to what other people find against Brand. The good thing about uh, Alistair here, at least if they pick Brand, is it'll have easy setup for Trick and hopefully I think that will be their plan, actually, when, when you pick Alistair like this. You want to just set up your jungler for multiple kills on something like a ring support. The thing that I find really interesting is the fact that ANX are currently setting up for a support last pick, which is going to be locked in with the Jace and the Cannon being taken away. Interesting, of course, Kira did have a good Jace game. 
You know what it's going to be. It's going to be support cannon like the old days. Aww. And what they're doing here and is they're, they're gonna just play... going double ranged bully in lane against Alistair. <laughs> and it'll be top lane Lucian, and then they'll play Callista. <laughs> and it'll be the dream. That that sounds too crazy for me. I don't even know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> you, see, you see G2 just hovering brand. They're not going to pick it, obviously, but maybe they're thinking ANX won't pick it. I also think, like... Uh, it's weird to pick Kennen here because they've shown Alice their first pick, and mm. Alice is a good champion against Kennen just for yeah, the W. Exactly. Just hit him out of the hole. Uh, it's kind of weird to me. I think whatever it is, uh, Liquid's just waiting for last pick because he's gonna like if it's not good for Bran, he's just gonna play Bard or something that's also good into Alistair. And if it's something really good for Bran, he'll just go Bran. Well, at the moment, we're looking at the Aurelia being picked up towards the top side of the map, Aurelia versus Kennen, something that has been considered relatively good. Mm -hmm. This Perks heads over to the Rise and will be locked. Expect also came into Europe being known as an Irelia player as well, so certainly has that in his back pocket. It's worth reiterating as we potentially wait for the Whoa. last huh? support. Oh, that's that's going to be locked in. Expecting. That's a conventional support, I was, was going to say, what is this? You beat the Rocks Tigers and suddenly you're like, okay, the craziness is over. Let's show the world. <laughs> Let's play seriously. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to that point, it's worth reiterating. G2 can't get out of the group. This is their final game of the tournament. This is only to get a one in the win con. ANX are playing this to get the first seed guaranteed in yep. Group A. So this is absolutely a serious game out of both teams. When uh, This game also this avoids go. a tiebreaker at the end of the day if Rox are able to take down CLG as well. So ANX, if they want an earlier time to go home, this would be a, ga a definite win that they'll need to put on the board at the same time. I think both teams are just going to play seriously. There's obviously, like you guys said, no one's going to take this game lightly. Uh, it's interesting, Liquid pick Brom, I guess, like, <laughs> out of any of the games, it's here, I'm just going to play something normal, let's play the game normal, I'm not too sure. There's also the fact that, you know, without the Braum, this ANX squad would have been one of those tankless comps, which hasn't necessarily been working out so well hmm. at the same time. So we'll see how it does go. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, send your questions to at LOL Esports with the hashtag AskTheCasters, and we'll answer as many as we can during the show. While these uh, players are loading up onto the rift, I'm so excited to see whether ANX can back up that victory against Rox in such a marathon game because that would have to weigh on your mind. A game going for that long mm -hmm. and then having to go straight back into another one, it's like a best of series, right? At least they'll be feeling like good about it. They'll, they'll go into it like, oh, we just beat Rox. Whatever happens in this game, like, you know, I'm sure they're confident too because like G2 is at the bottom of the group, so I don't think they'll feel very threatened by them. Well, we are onto the rift here for G2 versus ANX, and we'll be focusing on Mithy versus Licorit towards the bot side. And thankfully, Mithy does have a hilarious skin as well. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw Mithy play a lot of Braum as well this tournament, so we'll see how his Alistair into Braum kind of lets up. We're going to see some level one right now. They're, they're sending their whole team on the bottom side. We'll see whether anything is going to come of it. At the moment, it's the standard fan out from G2, but oh, no noise. vision on this in entrance to the jungle. This is like a solo queue invade, honestly. Like, you know, <laughs> you take your Blitz crank and you go this route. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, right. someone's <laughs> AFK. It seems like G2 is AFK. I, I think they're going to just end up getting a kill on the server here. Oh, what a tragedy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the five Sven's man squad. The ward goes over, Sven. Oh, he does the dial flash. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. Yeah. And there's the Braum stun for a way too easy a first blood. Hey, generally when you have your bot lane set up like that for G2, your mid lane rise, he should be standing about where they were going to invade and he'll drop his trinket there. So this, like, this is like a team like uh, planning issue. Uh, someone should be there, someone should see five people walk in, and someone should ping something and tell them to back off. And the, the funny thing there is Perks actually dropped down to that position after the invade, so he's <laughs> yeah. probably sat there thinking, okay, well, nobody's here, it's fine, yeah, everything's deceptive okay. Deceptive to his own team. Oh, yeah. Lecrit. Oh, oh Lecrit. the level no one. No way. Is this going to be this might the, work too. the flash auto Q coming out? Oh, he's shown already. Well, there's the Q, it's going Just to land. Ghost. I think it's the okay. ghost. It's good though. Yeah, I think it's a little too hard to make that play work without the exhaust. Also, just uh, uh, like Jace and Braum, they're not going to kill the Rise level 1. It'll be a little too hard. But yeah, he had some free times after that level 1 because the, he knows for sure the enemy bot duo can do the camp with the Siri dead. Um, so he's just going to use that time in roam mid. It's a pretty good play. A Miracle, of course, spends a lot of time on his own as well as Liquid does like to get around the map. 
Yeah, it shows, it shows in his champion's picks too. Like, Lucian is definitely like one, you know, he got a dash. He, he's not really too, <laughs> like, if the enemy Badu aggresses on him, at least he can fend for himself. So it's it's nice to see, like, at least they understand each other's, like, tendencies and what champions, like, pair up with each other. Oh, the there is the dash. Oh, there oh they sent Mithy. Yeah, good stun as the boomerang does fly out, Mithy. Half of his health bar, but we'll have triumphant roll. That's a very aggressive move. I I'm glad they they, re they recognize like they're both gonna ding two there, and they make a duo like aggressive play. Uh, that just got some Alistair's HP. It's not the most like significant trade, but it's just nice to see like action on the world stage, especially at early levels. And the trades are gonna go so heavily in, in the favor of VNX as long as they play it right. They've got a long sword up on the lane as well, <laughs> so if they can get Sven's potion, get a lot of Mithy's mana down as well, like there's some heavy trades to be made. One more right here. Oh, uh, walks back the into it though. Yeah, that, that's just that's uh, a little too much. Like, you have to be committed when you dash in, and that's just uh, a situation where there's too many creeps. <laughs> Lecret, he's on the roam again. Once again on walkabout, oh. misses the cube. Hey, PvP Stales taking a lot of damage with Trick still flash. flashes. Wow. This, is, this is okay, but yeah, he should have definitely saved his spell. You can't expect to hit a lot of people from max range with your Q. And just generally, your presence there with your W, like if you can jump to the, if you can jump to the Elise there, you'll threaten them a lot too. He's sticking around though. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Lecrit <laughs> has decided that from getting the kill for America level one, he's just like, I'm gonna play roaming support. Yeah. We're going Team Dignitas season two. I think he's in the bottom side A red teepee. jungle lane. What is this? Aurelia? Game? Uh, okay, well they're looking for something. Rappel goes up, PvP Seos is gonna get out and Lecrit. See ya. I mean it's like, okay, expect TP for that and got a kill, which is pretty worth for his TP. But it's like a lot of people to commit to just one kill, and it seems like the wave is not even that good for him top. So it turns out, like, one support death for that. I think uh, NX won't be too sad about that. Oh, recall cancelled from expect. So I think one thing that we missed out on is that Smurf, I believe, just TP back to lane in the top side. Obviously, we yeah. are support focused. So it looks like Smurf was getting crushed by expect in the early game. So this will give Smurf a little bit of room to kind of come back into the game on the top side and alleviate a little bit of that pressure that ANX would have had on the bottom side. But it, it's rough, though, because he's both. There's no TP advantage now for ANX. Yeah, I think they're. I mean, generally you'll see just the top laner TP back to lane just to match them. But since this is the situation, I think expect to sacrifice a few creeps top for a 300 gold kill. He got stopped once, which probably like denied him some more CS. But it, it, it seems like it's going to be fine. He's going to collect the whole wave. And does your playstyle change all that much when you notice the fact that you do have a teleport advantage or teleports are down? Can you? Like what, what do you do differently in order to utilize that, that like extra pressure? Generally, you want to aggressively put down wards so you can make a good opportunity for whoever has the TP advantage. Uh, the mo most likely one you'll see is the bot dealer wards in the far brush in the lane. And then you'll see a TP come in and it'll be a double kill and you'll take the tower. <laughs> and that's just generally the play. Um, that TP for expect is a little unexpected, but it really just came because the crit... <laughs> he is so aggressive. He's in their jungle. They all know, like the enemy team, he's... You know, he's like poking them over the Wraith wall, just using his level 1 Q. Kind of hilarious if you think about it. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, he just got collapsed on. Um, I think it's a little too hard not to die there, but he should just definitely be a little careful in enemy jungle like that. Let's see whether he is going to chill out. We do actually have a question while things are calming down. What is helping ANX push so successfully, says Cyber Viking C. Uh, first blood? I think they just got the mm. Longsword, level 2 early. Just dashes in, gets some uh, aggressive trade, and the Sivir has to back off and not hit the wave because of that. And then the Braum got a little more time. Yeah, and, and the other thing from that is if they're not pushing like that, Lickrick cannot afford to make those kinds of plays yeah. where he's going aggressive. So it's one of those things where a Miracle has to have the wave so far away from him that he can sit back and let Lickrick go in because you can't keep pushing like that if your support's walking into the enemy jungle. Yeah. Or the it, actually, you see a lot of the times when um, when you clear out the wave so fast like that, the AD will also accompany the support. Mm. and. It's just like a higher prob probability of like whatever play you make in there. Like it's more successful because yeah, two people instead of one. Um, I think it's also fine to just farm the wave because, with that said, like it's all also a lot more obvious if your AD just leaves the lane and walks in the enemy jungle. Definitely like a, e even though G2 is like at the bottom of the groups, like they can definitely tell their team like oh the AD is missing. You know they won't they won't die to like something something like that. Interesting thing that I've just noticed is a refillable potion picked up by Liquid. How often do supports choose to buy refillable potions? Um, it's interesting enough because I think Liquid starts refillable potion every game as support. He starts it instead of buying it. 
Um, I'm not actually too sure if you bought it or started this game, but this is just generally with the trend I've seen. Uh, for other supports, it's like you're very likely to buy a refillable potion on your first back, uh, especially if you don't have enough for a side stone, because the potion in itself is like pretty cost effective and you can sell it right after to just like get some of your money back. So I think that's actually the default one for supports. All right, I like it. I like it. It's uh, bottom side, but it's top side that PvP say, as you can see, picture in picture. Yeah, and a whole host of trouble is expect, and he it's should dead. fall down. There it is. There's no trade kill. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah, hitting the spiders. pretty significant because Trick had come bottom side to try and get a gank off after buying his Berserker's Greaves as a first item. Didn't get anything from it. And uh, you look at how this bottom side is going now, considering they've got a kill on their AD and uh, got a kill up on the top side as well. This, Again, when you look at how these top kills affect the bottom side now, a miracle, much easier job. Smurf is uh, significant you know comfortable in his position so miracle has a little less to do yeah you see since both supports are melee when you get them under the turret you you just have free time because obviously you can't engage on them while they're under the turret so both supports you saw, saw right there they just ran towards the river i mean it, it amounted to nothing but generally that's like the, a good play pattern to have now I assume ANX will probably be a little bit more comfortable as there's another engage towards the bottom side. Heal has to be used by a miracle, but they do manage to get the stun on Domithy Culling. Soaked by Sven. Keeps Mithy alive. No, what I was going to ask was, Smurf's got his teleport up, and now Cannon, with that extra kill, now has his revolver. Does this mean that ANX can play more aggressive because they know that that Cannon's going to be able to come down with the slicing mastery? Um, yeah, they, they should look to it, but I think um, enough time has passed where now both top laners have their TP. Yeah. Um, when it comes to this, you kind of just want to get like the minimum basic, not like not super deep wards, and you can still make the TP play if it's a good situation, but you definitely wouldn't want to force it as like before where you had the advantage. Yeah. I like the wards that are coming out from ANX here. You, you can see they got the crab, they got a pink in river and a pink in the tri bush behind them. So really the only way that Trick could get into the lane without being seen would be into a lane gank. But considering how pushed back ANX are, they've even got their own bush warded. So Trick can never get close enough to effectively, you know, utilize Graves kit because he'd have to dash forward, probably get caught by a Q and then get exhausted. So no real way into this bottom lane for Trick because of this warding pattern. Yeah, and this is like, this is just proper team play in the early game. Your jungler should cover for you in areas where you cannot. And getting the crab in general is really good for the bot duo. It just gives them that you know, feeling that you're safe from the river. And that's like the most common spot where you get ganked from. And when you're playing as well, like the supports often dictate where wards are going to be going as well as the rest of the map taking care of themselves here at this point. Um, definitely supports obviously have the most wards available to them. And yeah, they... they with the jungler, usually you kind of make a decision on uh, where you want to light up the map. So when it comes to this, you have to make sure in competitive play especially, you have good synergy with your jungler and you guys communicate well because oftentimes like just putting wards down randomly will definitely, like it won't help you progress in the game at all. Oh, again though, uh, yeah. ANX, this is Smurf <laughs> coming alive. You can see him picking up a kill. But, uh, I think it's a one for one. Yeah, it looks like a one for one overall. Or is it? <laughs> Liquid wanting to go aggressive though. Yeah. He sees really get too much. He sees uh, Zven out of mana. Uh, it's still kind of risky actually. The Alistair could have used his spells, but they just weren't too sure of where everyone was. The miracles no heal though. That's the other thing that, uh, as you're talking about, they can see Zven out of mana, but that's where like the Alistair, the damage reduction that can come out, and G2 generally have uh, you know decent trading potential here. The, what was an early game advantage in this lead from having one longsword isn't quite so significant anymore um, yeah. with Sven having gone back and bought and has a cull in the longsword too. Yeah, actually Sven didn't get the best back he could. I think Lucian is actually fairly strong, but earlier mm -hmm. Alistair got a good setup for some damage for Sever. Actually, yeah. Miracle blew his heal pretty early. Uh, it's kind of surprising you see that too because the Alistair doesn't have Ignite, so anytime he could use his heal, it'll be the full effect. So he should really be a little, just a little more pa patient, I guess. Like, don't don't be so pressured that you feel like you have to burn it right away just from an Alistair combo. We did just see Kira falling down in mid lane there as well, so all the kills evened out. 300 gold lead now for Anax, and it is going to be largely on this bottom lane to try and get things going on because they were the ones with the early lead. Oh, oh nice to do. Yeah. Actually, um, I'm not too sure. I, I think you can buffer the Q with the W so that it'll even go off if you get stunned. But it's a nice try, like nonetheless. You see, it's like he got some free time because the Sivir was pushing in the lane, and then just randomly grouped up with his jungler and forced uh, the Tuna out of stables. 
Holy crit, going to get a spell shield out of Sven. But continues to shove out the lane and just feels like this, doesn't it? It's just Siva is going to push as oh, often as possible. Like There's that? the flash gain for an ultimate, though. <laughs> to be honest, I think both these teams are a little jumpy. That's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you can dodge that. I, I believe in Sven to dodge that Braum, <laughs> like max range Braum ult. He can just move out of it. And yeah, I think both teams are just, they don't want to give up like too many disadvantages. He, he had to force a flash there that at least literally came out from like delaying. So there was like not too much threat about the Elise. But yeah, I think both ADs are just, they're farming it out. And I think Sven's going to get a pretty back here, or a pretty good back here. Yeah, back with 3,000 gold as well. They've been it's sitting in this lane farming yeah. for a long time. 13 guys. minutes. I think that that's one of the things that, um, you know, a lot of the teams, like what we would consider coming into this, the LMS teams, the wildcard teams, where you, you're never really sure where the skill level is. A lot of people yeah. talk about how the bottom lanes just sit in fact, there fact, every forever. region, really, because none of them play against each other, is we are going to have Trick sure. dying on the top side. Yeah. Like oh, the out. Here. This is a Trick's day read, actually. Wow. <laughs> the crit had free time. Oh, is this two kills? No way, right? Oh, oh, it is two kills. But he gets the auto. Yeah. Blasting and the exhaustion <laughs> as well. It's so scary. So we were asking what can Lacrit do on a conventional support? Uh, seemingly set everybody up. Just <laughs> hit him once for the stun, you know? Like, he can play conventional supports too. I'm convinced this guy is pretty good, actually. And he's on fire at the moment as well. You saw him in his player cam just celebrating, like... <laughs> The wind is most certainly in his metaphorical <laughs> sails at this point. I mean, how, how crazy is it that the wildcard <laughs> team is going to go 3-0 today, or at least they're on on track to. So I, I would be happy too if I was him. They certainly are on track to. And, and that was what we were going to kind of talk about is that, you know, the AD carries have this tendency to kind of sit in lane forever and stack up to like 3,000 gold. Yep. A lot of other regions will go back a lot more often and, and you get the smaller buys. So Sven's kind of getting dragged into this as well, where he's got 3,000 gold on him and has to go back at one point but you know a miracle once Sven oh, again slick dodge takes a full that color. piercing light but gets around the corner i think if he hmm, i think he should be really a little more you see a, a miracle he kind of like he changed his movement based on like how Sven reacted but he should he should know that's like a free kill if he gets everything off um it's nice for him to try though like even though he could have played it a little better it's good to see that he's like willing he knows he's really strong with the yomu's ghost blade and he's gonna just dash on the Sven every time he sees Sven alone. Yeah, of course not wanting to blow the flash for the piercing yeah. light afterwards. Yeah, he doesn't know where the Alistair is, so that's a smart move. What a crazy world we're in. It's a, it is a <laughs> mental world. Like, what stress. I, my brain's still recovering from the last game, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, as mine too, I have to, I have to see a dragon. <laughs> it's a dragon yes, as well. I could understand. <laughs> we basically were casting it upstairs. There was a lot of <laughs> shouting <laughs> at the screen. It was a very different kind of casting. <laughs> I, I have to hold back my emotions a little more though. You know? Oh, don't. Don't do that, Gabe. Just, just let it out. I'll we try to be I'll try to be as analytical as possible. No, but, but we need the player experience. I mean if you want the player experience, I was just internally freaking out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, good, got to stay cool, calm, and collected, you yeah. know? I understand, I understand. What did you make of Lacrit's Tarek in the last game? I think just we here, so. generally team fight play was fairly good. Um, the only complaint I really have was his vision control around Baron. Like, mm -hmm. just, it, it's a little, if it's uh -huh. a little better, it's like the game can be over in 30 minutes, but it went to 60. So <laughs> That Baron where Rox had the pink and two wards in, and they were just like, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm taking this Baron down. <laughs> Pina just that, humps over the fine. Pina just shows, doesn't uh, steal Barons very often. Yeah, it just shows how crazy A and X is. They're just like, okay, that doesn't matter to us. We're just gonna try to take the Baron anyways. Oh, Smurf. Yeah. Another ultimate is Liquid. Oh, no, Mithy are facing off. Smurf able to get some of the stuns, but it's a really very good, good knockup from Mithy, who's taking over this fight. Expect is going to fall first, and Smurf kept himself alive. Mithy has to run out. Wow, I think both supports played that as well as they could have. Although, I, I, sorry to cut you off, I want to see the replay because it looked like Mithy headbutted the ulting cannon back into yeah. his other team. Yeah, I think he was hoping to headbutt and then pull immediately so the ulting or the ult wouldn't go off. But it's like a matter. It's like a I don't know. It's a very close maneuver. We do get to see it though. Yeah, he was looking to combo and accidentally, like, was it the Braum ult coming across stopped him? I don't think so. I think he just wanted to push and then pull for a better position. But yeah, it's it's a close fight. I'm glad to see both supports just roam up there and try to make that play. You can see now G2 venturing into the enemy jungle. Moment, Liquid just banding with his team. Anex just hanging out. 
around uh, the mid lane. The crowd are going crazy because it looks like Steos just, just got away. We're going to actually take a look at it. So it was a rise <laughs> ult coming through from Perks. And oh, wow. Oh, this he is... He lives from this? Oh. How? No way. What? No way. Oh, what? No way. What are you doing? <laughs> and Lacrit comes in and saves him? Oh, that's insane. That's what? ridiculous. That's the happy feet. He's so, <laughs> I bet he's just so hyped from last game. He knows how to move his character. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his, just his hands shaking yeah. after the rocks win. It's like, that's how it's moving anyway, guys. It's, it's the champion playing him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way Perks is not like hands in his head yeah. after that. Like, that has to be that so like, frustrating. That's a, that looked like a freebie, but yeah, just a l you know, it's important to know that Ryze is actually a skill shot champion now. You know, yeah. you can miss all the cues just like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can still press your oh W though, unfortunately. Yeah. You just didn't have it off cooldown. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, but it is going to mean a thousand gold in the lead here for Albus Knox. So Lacrit, gone for the Moby Boots as you would expect as a oh, smithy, yeah. so uh, get yourself in the fight faster. Uh, Ruby Sightstone coming out early from Mithy. This is something we've seen pretty much from supports all over the world. Except Lecrae, I think. Except Lecrae. <laughs> but he delays Sightstone anyway, so why yeah. would he want a red one? It's only a different color, right? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that well, doesn't do damage. <laughs> something people don't actually think about that much. Since Ruby Sightstone lowers item cooldown, mm -hmm. it actually lowers your sweeper cooldown too. So like, if you get that item early, you can clear out way more wards, and theoretically that trans translates into more gold, right? Because you can <laughs> sweep out and kill more wards too, and just overall control the map better. But there's so many benefits in having Ruby Sightstone, but yeah, it, it looks like, um, I don't know, Lecrit doesn't even care about that. He just goes for the... Uh, I have the Equinox, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's pick that one up. We do have another question, though, in the meantime, while well, the players aren't smacking on each other. It's from... Bidge KDFMS Z0. Nicholas Kent. Nicholas Kent, thank you very much. Your <laughs> handle is ridiculous. What is the checklist for a safe and effective roam as support? Uh, this is a good question. I, I, I like that <laughs> because the first thing you should do is know if you can roam or not. This means if your AD is going to get completely screwed over by you roaming, don't do it. Uh, the second thing is, is like if you went home before the enemy support, this is generally the roaming time. If you got to back off, be mostly because if you had a stronger landing phase, you'll get to do this. Uh, if you home first, you have like tempo basically on the enemy support. And then the next step is just grouping up with your jungler because you shouldn't make solo plays as support. You really need someone else to do the damage. And then after that, just press the go button. <laughs> Oh, that is going to be a tower, actually, for free on the bottom side of the map for G2. Yeah, they brought their jungle down there, so it seems like um, it seems like ANX didn't want to fight over that. Mithy's heading mid. This one may not be so easy to oh get Oh dear, yeah. Happy feet aren't going to help you here. There's the Empowered Shock for us. He's at least lasting longer than yours. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I, I, love, I love how he's moving for that. I it, love the so G2 funny. emote there as well. Yeah. It's fantastic. He got him that time, you know. He's, mm -hmm. he's happy to spam the emote. <laughs> I, that's so. It's just so funny PvP Sayo's movement there because he knows he's dead, so he's just wasting. <laughs> it's time. almost like he's so mocking him. <laughs> yeah, you see some people they just stand still when they know that they're dead. PvP Sayo's not. Nah, he's running around. Make in it work for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You got to get the the distance counter going. You know, if at yeah. the end of the game you could count how much distance you've traveled, PvP Sayo's probably the most. Looks like GT is controlling the map fairly well in the Riverside. Um, I think for the most part. Um, that's like I think A and X can easily just push down bot with their Brom and like take their jungler and try to force a fight there. Double or both UPs are up, so uh, you should be confident in like fighting for that tower because if you bring your jungler, it's gonna start out like unevenly, and then if there's teleports coming in, you can match, and then that's how you push for the like the next phase of the game. And I think they're they're pretty content getting the dragon first. Yeah, there's a word there. Second mountain, though. Uh, they've showed they don't care about wards in objectives before. Yeah. This time they did clear it out, though. They should pull it out for sure. Kennen is already moving down to try and... Because he hasn't got his TP, so he's already moving down to try and preempt the Irelia coming down. Oh, so yeah. it's very close to being available. They're just trying to delay this fight only a couple of seconds longer for Smurf. But it's he's already halfway here. For Honestly, yes. he's actually snuck right in the back here. He's going to get a fantastic flank as well as the Slicing Maelstrom comes out. Trick doing a lot of damage. Mithy pushed out of the fight as a Miracle shooting into an ultimate. 
Uh, Alistar, Trick, flashes himself in. Collateral damage isn't enough as expect. Oh, there's the Repel. Good timing, but ANX is so low. Kira, the first one to fall down. Of course, PvP Stales is going to get out somehow. And there's the reset as expect. He's going to punish him. And good team fight for G2. This is the team we're expecting. This yeah. is much Finally better than G2. <laughs> a little late, but yeah, it was a great uh, exhaust and knock up by Mithy. It uh, looks like one more kill, actually, because he was caught in the end of his recall. Cute timing as well as a miracle. He's going to be taken down, of course. Liquid just getting back home. And uh, unfortunately, the backs weren't comboed correctly. Y you saw there the cannon came from the flank, but the team wasn't exactly like with the cannon as soon as he engaged. We'll get a another look at it, I think. Uh, right now, I think Ana should just hit the dragon and make him come towards the dragon. Uh, the cannon all ended up just hitting like the Grace for one tick and Alistair, which we exhausted him too. So it didn't end up doing too much, and they all went forward trying to commit to this. And then Lacrit is nowhere near the Aurelia after flashing out to exhaust, so there's no way of stopping this, like, yeah. the start of this Aurelia damage. I if he does, Lacrit dies just as the exhaust comes out, so there's no real way of him influencing the rest of that fight, unfortunately. This is like kind of the cleanliness I was talking about with a &X play. They, they know, like, okay, if Cannon comes down, We'll force the team fight with the 4v5 we have momentarily, but their execution of it was just like, okay, let's run at them and see what happens. So <laughs> they, they really should focus on how the enemy is feeling. Like, to be honest, if they just stayed in the pit, the cannon would have gotten a free flank. Maybe he would have gotten like a multi-man ult, mm. and it would have been a way better setup for it. And the it really, a TP would have been late as well. And the frustrating thing here is you see Smurf now recalled after that fight or was sent back to uh, the fountain after the fight picks up his onions so he clearly had like enough oh, gold yeah. on him to have that kind of item before the fight and it just is kind of must be frustrating for smurf there thinking well if i had zonias i probably wouldn't have got burst down by the graves so uh rough rough and oh enter what was a good fight beginning yeah and look talking about the previous game i mean albus Knox managed to take all of the turrets of uh rocks almost before they were able to take even one and now it feels like the opposite situation is true as g2 three to zero in their favor, and now, like as a support player, you can have so much opportunities oh. to wander into the base. And Mithy's doing exactly that. Fantastic double knockup, but is he going to find his way too far in? Yeah, it's good. Lecrae was just. Ooh, oh, what? Damn. Oh, his damage is actually so high, but yeah, it's good that Lecrae was able to be there for to counter that play. Basically, they just ended up evening out like the Alistair Polrez. Speaking of turrets in the mm -hmm. last game from Albus Knox, uh, we realized about 50 minutes into the game that uh, Albus Knox had defended enough turrets that Rock's Tigers had as many barons as they had turrets taken in the entire game. <laughs> I so. don't know whether that's exactly the maneuver that you want to be uh, busting out there, Smurf, and he is going to fall down. I have a feeling he was still going to be in trouble, though. Yeah. I, I think uh, this game actually got kind of tilted just because of the f team fight we just had now. Yeah. Um, I, I really think when you're going to go for a dragon like this, or what A and X was trying to do, you just kind of pull the dragon out if you're on that their, the purple side and just try to kill it. If they come, just leave it alone because they're not going to go for it. Um, what ended up happening was just like that terrible team fight for them. And now it seems like they don't really have much control over the map. And it's very difficult with the comp that ANX is setting up because they've only got the one tank. They're looking for flank opportunities with the cannon, but they're probably a little scared to do it. Yeah. Next time, he just got caught out while his uh, and used the Zonias. So the fact that now expects TP is going to be up for TP advantage, not being in ANX favor anymore, makes it rough again. Yeah. If you really think about it, the cannon in this composition is like a just like a Alistair. He's mm. not going to really kill anyone with his ult. Everyone has MR or is like super tanky. Like he can't kill Perks, he can't kill Sven, he can't kill Mithy. Like he really can't do anything by himself. So he can only set up his team. And with that in mind, I, I wonder why they even went for the cannon to the like that matchup. It seems like they they could have like really thought out their picks a little more. And since like that last team fight went so poorly, uh, you're gonna just see him struggle throughout this game. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Where are the most important places to be placing vision, though, if you are Lickrit and you're in this sort of really difficult position mm. where you don't have a lot of map control? Are there sort of a few places where you need to have vision? Uh, yeah, so right now, okay, basically they have to come to you for you to make a play as A and X. So the best places to ward are basically your entrances because they might poke their head in too far and then you'll have a good opportunity to start a good fight. Speaking of good fights, potential here is Mithy has to hold himself. I think he should be fine. They don't really want to commit to this that hard too because they'll take too much time. Stairs. Oh, that damage. 
playing aggressively. There's the flash. Perks picks it up. <laughs> That actually looked pretty funny. Perks just used both summer is just to eat that at least. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, he want he wanted revenge. He nailed it. He nailed it. <laughs> but yeah, right now G two is actually doing what I said. Like Lecrae had a hard time doing in the past. They're just slowly taking control of this topside jungle. You know, like even though they just face checked in. Oh yeah. See now the Baron has no wards because they swept it just a moment ago. And you know, ANX aren't too sure exactly what's happening. They have to use the sweeper, but at this time it's already dead. Yeah. Yep. 27 minutes in, and that's going to be a free Baron G2. Where's really this? taking control of this game. 8,000 gold is the lead. Where's this G2 the whole turn? I know. <laughs> they took a long time to get here. Yeah. What a shame, too. They've had a history of that in uh, yes. international tournaments was, uh, as well. I was at MSI. Yeah. But that play, funny that we were talking about Vision before, and since it's such a fundamental, of course, we'll end up talking about it a lot. That all stems from the <laughs> fact that ANX, uh, you know, stepped too far into their jungle without clearing it out. Yeah. All of that play started on a ward from G2, and that's how G2 were able to react, coming back towards the fight. And one kill onto the jungler at this point is easily going to result in a, in a yeah. Baron, and, and that allows G2 to just get that objective and look for the base. Yeah. If, if you just think about it fundamentally, if you just clear out uh, like an important like piece of vision, they're just going to be sucked into it, and then you can make your own play. So <laughs> that's the main difference for me between Mithy and Likrit. Mithy understands that a little better, and he can set up his plays like that. Well, Liquor, he, he has like, he understands that to a certain degree, but just not as clear as Mindy. I feel like Liquor also has only one direction that he goes as well, which is forward. <laughs> yep. So now needing to play defensively, it's just not all that used to it. They're going through the siege on the bottom side. I do have one more question though for you, Gate. And uh, it's from Alan, or iGodly Pro, which is a much more easy one to pronounce. Do you think that Thresh will be a more prominent pick at the tourney con uh, as the con tourney continues to stop the popular Alice? Uh, I think Thresh is not bad against Alistair. Personally, I think things that are strong against Alistair are Tom Kench and Bard. Um, those two just make too much time for Alistair teams to like properly use his CC. Uh, Thresh is also a good one, but I think it's uh, more often than not that Alistair just combos the Thresh and the Thresh gets one shot. <laughs> and he, I don't think Thresh is bad at all, but it takes a little more like ex time to like. Like you have to put a lot of games on to execute them well too. So generally picking like simple champions, so to speak, it's like or just like the more reliable ones. Yeah, they're, yeah they're I think generally reliable is a good word. Yeah. yeah, that was the the word that if you hadn't have mentioned it, I was gonna say because Alice is the same. You press W Q the same every time. You're going in there. You get gonna combo. Whereas Thresh. Um, as engage is so unreliable, especially it's a on this bit low more ping environment. Middle though, I feel like you can throw out a hook, yeah, and then just you know choose whether you want to act on it. That it's sort of it's true. Well, things like Bard are also good because of that reason. Like, mm. you just throw the ult. If it hits, great. Let's get a stun on that too. Yeah. But yeah, with Alistair, you're you're just more impactful too when you go in. Yeah, it's just like a instant knock up. You know they're going to be CC'd. You know Alistair's probably not going to die in that time too. So it's just like a lot of benefits to get out of the champion. Risk reward. Yeah. Or definitely higher based on the risk you take. You can see NX trying their very best to hold on. It's a 1 1 3 situation here from G2 as well. As Liquid's trying to do his best, running around all of the lanes to help people out. See, G2 are just like playing the map well too. They're just putting pressure where ANX cannot respond. And this Ow. is just overall good play. Yeah, they're, they're just going to chip the tower. Looks like they got it. They're going to back off right away. It seems like the 1v1's going well top. They're going to get the tower as well. Uh, and this time they could just go back and hit the bot turret as soon as they see people top. Oh, they should back up a little bit right now. Yeah, really good spell shield there at the same time. So yeah. G2, really clean League of Legends. They really understand the game. All they have to do is back off. And now top should be backing off now too because they're going to send people there. And then as soon as they see the three, the two should aggress a little more. Or now if they ch chose to make the call to all back, they all should just get out, take their jungle, and then try, that, try the same thing they were just doing just one more time and two didn't hit. And the problem for ANX is their wave clear is so few and far between on a lot of things. You've got like the combo of Elise plus Jace can just about deal with a wave, but yeah. then unless Lucian has his ultimate available, it, you're just getting pushed in and there's no real safe way of stepping forward to clear it out. So it means that at least damage on the turret is going to come time and time again. Yeah, and this is like a common trend with poke teams. They get behind, they can't do anything when they get sieged on. Yeah. And then you kind of just slowly lose the game, which is why I, I like personally, I don't like Jace too much, especially in mid. I actually, I, I prefer him top because it seems like he gets a lot stronger. And then 
is like when he comes like once he wins his 1v1 he just comes to any lane and just like hits the tower with you with his eq too to pressure them and then you get advantages like that when you have it mid it's like you don't have like a magic da like you don't have too much reliability in your magic damage and it seems like this game they got behind so there's not too many options for him too yeah, Fox as well doing ridiculous amounts of damage <laughs> a on the rise. I feel damage. like the mid game uh, matchups are a little bit more difficult for Ryze, uh, for Jace as well. We've yeah. seen Jace do quite well against things like Cannon, which have been so incredibly popular. It's interesting. He has, he has Ghost too. And I, I really like, I don't think that's a common summoner for Jace. I see many Jace mid players take something like Cleanse or even, even Exhaust. Even Exhaust, yeah. yeah like, mm. lets you do your damage quickly and you're not too scared of people coming at you. Whereas, like, the Ghost, I think you have. Like some Jace players go Storm Raider Surge anyway, so you're, you're <laughs> yeah. already running at the speed of light already. <laughs> and you've got an acceleration gate. You've got yeah, your own exactly. speed boost. Just hit an EQ. You just run at them at like a thousand movement speed and then hit your Q too, like in your melee farm. The crit, hang on. Just getting that ward down. Instantly cleared out. It's so difficult to yeah. uh, secure vision yeah. control this late. It's very dark for e Albus Nox Even right if now. he, like the thing, the problem is they really cannot make any fight on anyone without like committing five or four people to it. So they're just slowly getting choked out by G2 and it's not gonna be, I don't think he'll, there's like, there's no like realistic opportunity for the crit and his team. It's just so incredibly clean. G2 just haven't given them an opportunity. That one team fight seemed to have sealed the fate yeah. of ANX. I mean, the only real way ANX can get You can get a TP in somehow with a cannon flank and try and do what Smeb did to G2 the other day, but yeah. that's so unlikely that G2 will move into a position without sweeping. Yeah, their champions are just too good for it too. Even if yeah. the champion or the cannon comes in, oh, we see Bromwell used. Oh, they're just trying. They're, they're getting a little desperate because they have to force us. Like they have to pick a side with any number of people. They have to immediately spot an opening, and they have to go right away before they lose too much damage on their structures. Um, Carlos Cordova does have a Twitter question for us here as well, Gabe. And he asks, who do you think is the best support in solo queue? I, I just, I spam Tom Ken solo queue because I think it's <laughs> just like a second TF. You just, <laughs> you get your level six. I, I say this to my teammates all the time. Your Q does 280 magic damage. That's more than TF. <laughs> and you just, you run around the map, you... You're just like, you do a tons of damage, dude. I think he's the best currently, but if I were to pick like a close second, I would say Bard. Uh, yeah. I think definitely those two champions excel in the environment of solo queue. Will you be trying more Brand? Brand? After watching the crit. Uh, yeah, I actually like those mage champions in general. I used to be a mid player, so like they play really similarly to like how I used to play, but in the bottom <laughs> lane. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I even put like I played like three games of Brand after I saw the crit played it. It felt good, so it's definitely not like a, you shouldn't write it off as like a cheese pick or like a pocket pick. It, it could be good in the right circumstances. Looking forward to Brand support in the LCS <laughs> next season. Yep. Hell yes. Hopefully, not too much will change. Then you know this world's <laughs> so exciting. Yeah, exactly. Well, as you can see, at least ANX has now been able to move out of their base. No inhibitors have been taken. G two. Taking their foot off the pedal just a little bit, but probably just trying to ease Albus Knox into a position where they can destroy them. Yeah, I think their focus is on Baron, but what's important to know is that it doesn't mean they have to just kill them. Oh, I guess he can't really buffer the Q, because I feel like he definitely did it there. Mm. And unlike Mitty to oh flip so goodness. many, he seems like he's that damage of Liquid is so low. PvP Stairs once again in trouble as Smurf goes in. The desperation play out of Albus Knox. As PvP Stouse is going to be the first one to fall down, Smurf's quick to follow, and look at the kills. That is for a miracle, the last man standing. They're going to need exactly that if they're going to take this game as G2. One of the cleanest games, so depressing. This is one of the cleanest <laughs> games that we've seen so far at Worlds. Against the powerhouse that is ANX2, like, you know, they're number one. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they don't guarantee it because well, they did yeah, just now lose this game, but they still are qualifying through the quarters. They most certainly are. It's all on CLG versus ROX in our next series as to what is going to happen. But congratulations to G2. What now a, going to at least sweet. finish on a high note, you know? Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah, see, no, they're not jumping around because, you know, this was the last game they're going to play at Worlds. Uh, Kind of sad to see, actually. <laughs> yeah. 
they stopped uh, stopped the haunting words of their coach from last year's Worlds about you know Yamato was thinking that a particular team was going to go 0-6 thankfully it was not the case for his team this time around but I mean ANX that's got to be a ridiculously large sigh of relief for them just in general now they already know they're through there's yeah. nothing really that that can change that and there's also the fact that ANX picked a weird composition, I mean, with the only tank being a Braum, things like that, Liquid also playing Braum, which just yeah. feels wrong, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. My mind. Like, that is not a champion that he's necessarily all that comfortable with. Anex probably looking at this game thinking, we're going to play it as seriously as we can, but we're not going to give anything away. We're just going to play some more champions, you yeah. know? Seems like just like a practice, like maybe that was their scrim. Yep. They're just treating the same way. <laughs> They're like, oh, we've got a, uh, we've got G two uh, scheduled for uh, four to seven. seven yeah. Yeah. You did <laughs> mention it's difficult for them to find scrims, so it would make sense, <laughs> yeah. you know, utilize the, yeah. the pra because that game, in all honesty, did not mean a massive amount. Mm -hmm. And uh, Albus Knox were just looking to make sure that they could finish strongly if they could, but it's not too much of a big deal unless. Of course, that victory comes out of rocks and they're forced to play once again. But, of course, if they're looking for more practice, it's the best way to do it. Make yeah. sure you just oh, have more games. Yeah, maybe that was their plan the whole time. They uh -huh. just want a little more practice. Geniuses. <laughs> Makes for some interesting situations now. I, yeah. I've been saying it. Maybe we live in a world where INTZ get second in their group and somehow <laughs> ANX still hold on to first and you get a, a Brazil versus CIS did we get the ANX versus quarter INTZ final. quarterfinal Woo. match? That is most Guaranteed certainly seconds. the dream. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy that that is also a thing that's possible, right? right. Like, yeah. But in a good way. Yeah. In a good way. Because ANX, Amazing. ANX have done such a good job with their strategy and, you know, they've had crazy picks and whatever, but still, uh, on a fundamental level, they have outplayed their opponents in this group. Yeah. And, and I think the fact that we can say that is kind of yeah, that's amazing. crazy in a great just, way. Just their team play, too. Just, um, like, regard, uh, disregard anything I say about, like, how they should do vision or anything. Just the way they play with each other, it's, it's actually, like, it makes me happy seeing that because some wildcard teams, like, in, in the past, they kind of just roll over when it comes to that. But this team definitely... That's definitely not the case for them. Yeah, they most certainly came to play. But we'll be back for the, for the, final, the final scheduled game of the day. Where we'll welcome Inori back to the show and focus on the jungle matchup between Peanut and Smithy. Until then, we'll send you back to the mainstream for an interview with G2's Perks. I think this is just make us stronger for the longer run. And one turn.